What's up guys, I'm Mavs here and in our bearings extravaganza today we are going to be looking at AQA first and the first question is asking us what is exactly northwest of the station so the station is here and we've got to figure out what direction northwest is so if we look uh, at this right hand side it shows us the direction of north if I draw a line going left from it, that is west. And northwest is exactly halfway between the north and the west line. Simple as that. So let's pick a different color. Northwest would be here. And it's exactly halfway. So that's northwest. Okay. So if it's exactly halfway, let's draw a diagonal line, a perfectly diagonal line. Oh, that's not a line. Let's draw a perfectly diagonal line from the station. And looking across the line, you can see there's only the library is on that line. So it's the library that is northwest of the station. Moving on. Um, question B says, circle three figure bearing of the monument from the park. So really important with bearings to figure out where you're at uh, at the bearing, like where are you doing the bearing from? So it says of the monument from the park. So we're at the park and we're trying to work out the angle of the monument. Okay. So if we're at the park, it means we are here. And we've got to figure out where the monument is, which is down here. So, if I draw my north line from the park, let's draw my north line. And if I draw the uh, line to monument, what angle, going clockwise, is the monument from the north line? So let's work out what angle it is. Whoops. Let's work out what angle it is. It's that angle there. And that is 180 degrees. Let's have a look. And there we are, 180 degrees. Our next question comes from Edexcel. <clears throat> and we're asked to find the real distance between Backley and Cranford. And the way of doing that, the only way of doing that is using a ruler. Now, this is kind of difficult for me to do because this is all scaled up and, you know, everything. But we just need to get our ruler out and measure this. Now... I'm going to cheat uh, and just look up the mark scheme because I don't have the physical co uh, copy of the paper in front of me. I have most of them. I don't have this one. I probably do actually, but I, th I think I've printed out on A5 anyway, so it'd be all halved and stuff. But anyway, <laughs> that aside, um, the real distance is 5.5 uh, centimeters. So 5.5 centimeters. But the important thing to realize with this question is it says that one centimetre represents half a kilometre. So we will need to halve that. So we just need to do 5.5 divided by 2, which is 2.75 kilometres. I think there's probably an answer bit there. There we are, 2.75. Now, really, really important that you write down the measurement you got. The reason for that is if your measurement is slightly off, uh, and they allow you some leeway. They will allow you between 5.3 and 5.7, which is a lot. Um, you can only get the marks for the answer, the 2.75, or if you've got 2.7 or, or whatever it is that you got when you halved it. Uh, if they, if you show them that you've got that 5.4 centimeters and you've done 5.4 divided by two to work it out. So it's really important you show the measurement you've got then um, the answer in case you're slightly off right next bit says find the bearing of Cremford from Blackley or was it Backley okay yet again we're focused on where it says from it means we're from Backley it means we're at Backley and we're working out the angle of Cremford so we're at Backley and we've already got the north line but I'll just go over it so there's our north line we're looking at there. 
and we're looking so we're looking at the angle of Cranford, the bearing of Cranford, so it's this angle here. Okay, so get your protractor out and I'm just gonna show you where to put the protractor and then delete this afterwards. So the protractor will go, oh that's a dodgy protractor. But you'll have the dot on the protractor at Backley. You'd have the north line all nicely um, lined up with the zero um, on the protractor. And if you need to extend the north line, just get your ruler out and extend it. And then you're reading off what the angle is here. Now, if you did this correctly, you'll get the angle of 130. And again, they give you a little bit of leeway. So they allow you to be off slightly. Um, and I think they allow you between 128 and 132, which is quite a lot. So just, if you need to extend that north line, just extend it, it's no problem at all. Um, if you need that, just to read it off. Last up is our OCR question. Now this question is, uh, as a question as a whole, it's a grade five question. It came quite close towards the end. It wasn't the last question, but I think there was one question after it and that's it. So this is grade five question. So if you understood everything else today and you're not quite sure about, especially question um, B on this, then then that's fine. Um, but I thought I'd, I'd do it anyway um, and see how we go. So looking at the information, it's really important to just jot down the information on the diagram that it gives us beside it. So we've got kind of I'm rubbish at drawing these lines. We've got some distances that it shows us um, of 25 kilometers between uh, A and C. So 25 there. We've got 25 here as well. Um, and I'll do this in a different color because it's the different part of the question. And we're given this as 45. Okay, so we're asked to work out the bearing of B from C. So from C. So let's get our north line drawn at C. That's our north line there. And we're looking at this angle here. That's our bearing. Now, do not get your protractor out because if you were astute, you'd realize it says not to scale. So this isn't one we do with a protractor. And you might think, well, how do we do it? Because, you know, is there enough information? It doesn't tell us any angles. Well, it kind of does. And this is why this is a grade five question because it's actually a little bit sneaky in that you've got yourself a um, isosceles triangle there and you've got 90 degrees there because the distance, uh, the angle between north and east is 90 degrees. So in an isosceles, we know the base two angles, the bottom two angles, which is this one and this one are equal. And if we know that that's 90, we do 180 angles in a triangle. Let's write this down, 180, because angles in a triangle. Um, take away the 90 we know, equals 90. And the bottom two angles, are, the base two angles are going to be the same. So we halve that. That gives us 45. So we know this one here is 45. I'm sorry if the, the it's a little bit small, but we know it's 45 degrees. And we know that the full angle, and I'm just going to draw this and then delete it, but we know that this full angle here is 180 degrees. So to work out the bearing, we do 180, take away the 45 which is 135. So it would be 135, and it says degrees in the answer. Okay, so that was quite difficult, but not impossible. The next part seems like it's going to be absolutely impossible, but it's not, and we'll see why. It says calculate the bearing of D from B. Now what might be helpful here is I draw the diagram again. So I'm just going to quickly draw the diagram. Maybe make it a bit bigger so we can see. Okay, so we've got B here, got A here, D here, 
45 the distance here and 25 the distance here and we're going from B so got our north line there and we're working out this angle here okay of D from B now first thing I notice straight away is we've got a 90 degrees here so really what we're trying to think about in this question is we're trying to figure out what that angle is because if we knew that angle we could then take that angle and 90 degrees away from 360 and that will give us the bearing but it looks like it's impossible how are we going to work out that red angle and this is this is why this is definitely grade five because you will need to use trigonometry now if you don't know anything about trigonometry we do have videos coming up soon on trigonometry and we'll do some basic ones and some harder ones but let's give it a go so steps of trigonometry step one is find out where your and let's do a different color actually to make it a bit easier to figure out find out where your 90 degree angle is and go opposite it and mark that length as h for hypotenuse and i always put a circle around it as well then find out the angle you're you've either given or you're looking for go opposite that and that is called the opposite so over opposite and the one between the 90 degrees and the angle in the question is the adjacent so we put an a there next step cross out the one that doesn't have a number next to it or that you're not trying to find if you look that h has nothing next to it so we cross that out not interested next step you write down saw ca toa and those are three triangles they make so ka toa and you look through so ka and toa to find out which one has the letters that you haven't crossed out so we're looking for which one has the o and the a well so has a h which we've crossed out ka has the h and toa is the one we're looking for right next step Draw the triangle. In fact, let's actually draw a nice triangle. Have the option to draw a nice triangle. So why not? Right. T stands for tan, and you always tan an angle, but we don't know what the angle is, so we just say tan x because we're looking for the angle. The O goes on the top. Now the O, there's a 45 next to it, so 45 that goes there, and the A, there's a 25 next to it, so 25 thing goes there. Now, you know how to use these triangles, okay? It's going to be 45 over 25. And the tan x is the one we're trying to find, so it's equal to that. Simple as that. So we write that out. Tan x equals 45 over 25. Now, this is the part you should be used to, or you will get used to. I'm going to put my tram lines in. Tram lines means uh, we haven't found out what x is. And we found out what tan x is which is 45 over 25, which is interesting, but I want to know what x is. So we've got to do something to both sides of this equation to get rid of that tan. And the way of doing that is called inverse tan, which is a tan with a minus one. So we're going to do that to both sides, inverse tan both sides. That gets rid of the tan on the left-hand side and leaves x. And it means we've got to do the inverse tan of 45 over 25. We get our calculator out and you click shift or second function or whatever it is on your calculator and then tan and it should come up on your calculator as tan with a little minus one. We do 45 over 25 and be careful to make sure you close the bracket otherwise you get an error. Press equals and I get the answer of 60.9453 blah blah blah. Now we keep that in our calculator because that is only giving us the answer to this angle here. So we know that's 60.9 blah, blah, blah. Okay, but we need to add that to the 90 and then take it away from the 360. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to do uh, 90.9 blah, 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 plus 90. And we're gonna take that away from 360. So I'm going to leave it in my calculator. What I'm going to do is I'm going to type in 360, take away bracket, answer, 
plus 90. If you've got um, a modern calculator, it should hold the last answer, so you can just use it straight away. What you could do is round that to 60.9453, and then just use that, and that would be fine. You'd still get the marks. When I do that, I get 209.05. Actually, yeah, let's put the answer here, 209. 0.054, blah, blah, blah. And I might just round that to uh, 209, uh, to the nearest degree. Uh, you probably could round it to one decimal place, 209.1, that would be absolutely fine. But there's no need to round it any more than that. So if I completely lost you on question B, if you were happy until that point, that's absolutely fine. Because a lot of people doing the foundation paper are working on a grade 2, grade 3, grade 4, that kind of area. There's not many people on the foundation paper who are working at a grade 5 at this point. However, if you're interested in figuring out what it is that I've just gone through and you want to understand it, then wait for the video on trigonometry which will be coming. Um, and check out our website on the trigonometry topics. And we've got videos on this channel on trigonometry already. Um, so just maybe have a look at it and try and look at maybe more basic videos. Uh, and then maybe come back to this video and see whether you understand it then. That is going to conclude our video for today. A little bit of a longer one. Um, if you like the video, if you found it useful, please click like. If you want to see more from us please click subscribe and if you want to uh, check out other resources we've got go to our website on maths.com which is full of completely free stuff for you to practice using for your maths qualifications forevermore thank you very much and we'll see you tomorrow